Well, I had to make some hard decisions in the rabbitry this week, things that are never easy to do. Give me a second, we'll tell you all about it. Well, as you guys may know, if you've been following the channel for a while, I raised silver fox rabbits. That's what I've been raising for a while now, a couple of years, a um, year and a half, two years I've had them, something like that. Um, two, two bucks, two does. Uh, these are one of my breeding pairs right here, my buck back here behind me. They're going to be hard to see because they're kind of black and it's probably a black hole back behind me and my doe right here. But I no longer have my other buck or my other doe. Uh, so, tell you the story of kind of what happened is, I originally got two bucks, two does, unrelated, so I could breed them, save some of the babies out, and sell them as breeders. So that's exactly what I had done. I had saved some of the babies out of my last litter, not from one of these, not from these two, but from my other two, um, my blue silver fox doe, if you've seen the channel for a while, you've seen her before, and uh, my other buck, my other, he was a black buck. I saved two of their uh, babies from their last litter out, had them growing out uh, for a couple of months, grew them out till about three months roughly, and uh, offered them up for sale as pedigree silver fox rabbits because that's what they are. They're pedigree silver fox rabbits. They were a little over three months, probably closer to four months. Um, anyhow, um, offered them up for sale, had a couple of people contact me and say they wanted to buy them. I only had two, I only saved two, a buck and a doe. They were related, so they weren't gonna be able to be bred together. That's not necessarily important for the story, but anyway, just to give you some context. Um, so I saved two of them out, um, the buck, a doe, grew them out, offered them up for sale on Craigslist, got contacted by some people that wanted to buy them. One person wanted to buy the buck, one person wanted to buy the doe. Um, so the, you know, I set up and arranged for them to come and pick them up. Uh, the first guy that comes and picks them up, he's actually a YouTube viewer, a new viewer of mine, lives in the area, his name is Mike, I believe. You may see him on a live broadcast sometime soon. He came to pick him up. And before I get into any more detail, I'm kind of rambling here, sorry, but I will tell you, I already shot this video once, uh, and then I went to edit it, and I had no no audio. Apparently, I didn't get my mic plugged in all the way, so I'm retelling the story, and I don't have anything to show you. You know, I, I showed you, well, we'll get into why I don't have anything to show you. So anyway, I get the, the doe out, and I say, hey, let's double check, let's make sure she's a doe, just to be sure, because sometimes, you know, that happens. You, you think one's a doe, and it ends up being a buck, or whatever. So I get her out, I turn her upside down to check if she's a doe, and her feet are up in, you know, back feet up in the air, and I could see clear as day, sore hocks, sore spots on her feet. She had sore hocks. I hadn't noticed any symptoms from her uh, whatsoever, so it kind of surprised me. Well, I immediately, of course, I tell the guy, look, I'm sorry you had to drive out here. I mean, it wasn't that far for him. He's kind of local, so that let's, he is local, so that's good, but I, I did tell him, Look, you don't want this rabbit. Um, sore hawks, that can be a genetic thing. They'll pass it on. It's always going to be a perpetual problem. You're always going to have problems with that. If you don't know about sore hawks, it is generally a genetic thing. It's basically the fur on the bottom of the pads of their feet is too thin. It doesn't protect their feet uh, very well, and they can develop sore hawks over time. Um, sometimes it develops really early. Sometimes it takes a long time to develop. So anyway, check the buck just to be sure and the buck had sore hocks as well. So I go back and look at the parents. The buck is, you know, my, the, the father, the buck of the, you know, dad of those two uh, that I'd saved out, he looked great. He had great looking feet, nothing wrong with them whatsoever. Check my blue doe. I think she was probably my favorite. I really like that doe. Um, check her, pull her out. I noticed for about a week or two, a couple of weeks actually, I've noticed it looked like a couple of times she was standing kind of on the front of her feet instead of instead of flat on her feet like rabbits do. And I was a little concerned. I'd been looking at her feet and hadn't noticed anything. Well, I got her out and did a real close inspection. She didn't have big sores on her feet, but she definitely had some, some real thin fur there and the starts of some uh, sore hawk sores. So I guarantee that's where it came from. It's passed down from that mother to those two. So... You know, I can't ethically, I mean, I could keep her and I could breed her and I could use the, you know, use them as meat. They're going to be fine meat rabbits, but it's it's going to be it's probably going to get worse. It's probably going to get worse and it's going to be a perpetual issue. Now, I've got resting mats in here for them, so before anybody goes to saying, well, if you didn't keep them on wire cages, that's not the case with sore hawks. I shot a video on that years ago. Sore hawks is not caused by wire cages. It's caused by the thin fur on the bottom of their feet. And uh, 
they'll, you know, rabbits that are prone to sore hawks will get sore hawks whether they're on solid floor, wire floor, whatever. It doesn't matter. It, it, it can happen. So anyhow, um, so here I am stuck. I've got two four-month-old rabbits that I can't sell. I can, not in good faith, I can't do that. Uh, so, and I've got one person that's, you know, I've already had to turn down. Um, and then I've got another person that's planning on coming and picking up the buck the next day. Well, I, I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to handle this one. I had to think about it a little bit. And uh, turns out, um, the, the guy that came over, Mike, one of my viewers, um, he, he was actually going to pick up some Tamuk rabbits from somebody locally. Somebody was selling Tamuks locally. And I thought, huh, who is that? So he sent me the information for that. So I looked into that and uh, decided, you know what? i got to make room if I'm going to get a couple of Tamuks. I've been wanting Tamuks for a while. That gives me some heat tolerant rabbits back into New Zealand's a little faster growth growth rate if you don't know what Tamuks are they're a New Zealand white that was developed basically by by the Texas A&M University and uh, for I mean they, they carry all the qualities of a New Zealand you know fast growth uh, good good size litters um, you know all the things that you all the good things you get with a New Zealand white but they're also added to be more heat tolerant than normal rabbits, any kind of normal rabbit, more heat tolerant. So we'll see if that holds true. So far, they seem to be holding up pretty well. It's not overly hot right now, but they seem to be holding up pretty well. Um, I, could, I did get two, spoiler alert, I got two. <laughs> but So what I ended up having to do, here's how, how it all worked out. Um, I decided um, I need to get rid of, I, I've got to call that doe. I can't keep that doe in production. She's not you know, it's just not ethical. It's not humane to her. She's suffering, obviously. So I had to call her, put her out. I had to do the same thing with the other two rabbits that I had saved for selling because same thing. They got sore hawks. It's not ethical to, to keep, you know, they're suffering. There's, a, there's an issue. They need to be called. That's a humane thing to do. So I went ahead and took care of that. I messaged the lady that was going to come and buy the buck and let her know the whole story. Sorry. You know, I just checked them. They got sore hawks. You're not going to want this buck. And then I got to thinking about it and I was like, hey, do you want, I mean, because I'm, I'm stuck with two silver fox bucks and one silver fox doe, I need to free up some cage space so I can get two tamucks, a buck and a doe. Um, so I thought, hey, you want to buy this other buck? He's only about three years old and uh, offered it for sale to them. I said, his feet look great. They're going to be fine. They were just getting into meat rabbits. So that's what they did. They came out, picked that buck up, went ahead and bought him. And then the next day, I you know, messaged that guy that had the Tamuks for sale, and the next day he came by, we got two New Zealand Tamuk rabbits delivered. So let me give you a show of what they look like. All right, so kind of looking through the cage here, there's a, this is my buck over here. He's kind of laying behind the feeder, so you can't see him too much. And this is my doe. These guys are only about three months old. So, so far, you know, the thing I always worry about with New Zealand is they can be a little bit crazy. That's the thing I always liked about the silver foxes that they're so easy to handle and doe especially the new zealand white does seem to be a little crazy sometimes but she seems to be very eager to i mean she likes the attention i'll open this cage up when i come out and feed her in the mornings she is always at the front of the cage wants to be petted she'll come right up here let you reach in i know i'm blocking the camera let me get on the other side reach in here and let you pet her she does not mind at all so I'm hopeful that she's going to keep this good attitude. She's not at all, she's not overly shy. She's not jumpy, aggressive, anything like that. She's just, uh, so far, really pretty mellow. So that's good. Uh, the buck is a little bit more shy, but I never have too many problems with bucks one way or the other. They're usually pretty mellow. Let me back this camera up. We'll talk just a little bit more. All right, so like I said, I have already shot this video once before, and it was before I went ahead and called all, you know, those other three rabbits. Um, and I was able to show the, you know, kind of what I had going there. I'll put a couple of clips. I probably already did actually you probably already saw them where I showed the clips of me showing the, the sore hawks from that, uh, one young doe. Um, but anyway, so they're gone. That's a tough decision. I mean, I like that blue doe quite a bit. She was a good mother. She was super mellow, very pretty rabbit. Just, I mean, she was probably my favorite, honestly, uh, cause she was unique. She was a little different, but, uh, that's what, I mean, when you raise rabbits, when you raise any kind of animal, you're going to have to deal with that kind of thing from time to time. And you're just going to have to make some hard decisions. Uh, sometimes it's not easy. Um, and I know there's lots of people out there that would say, what do I do to treat it? What do I do? It's, 
in my opinion, it's a losing battle to try to treat that um, because it's just going to come back. You're always going to be treating it. The rabbit is obviously she's suffering. Rabbits don't show um, pain like other animals do sometimes because they're a prey species in the wild. They don't want to let on. Um, but I could tell something was up with her for probably about the past month. I've noticed a couple of times where she was, like I said, when she'd walk, she'd walk on her toes instead of the flat foot, which immediately gave me concern for her sore hawks. And I was trying to look and I couldn't notice anything. It wasn't until I got her out and really got close inspection that I could see where it was, you know, she did have some small sores there and that, that uh, fur was really, really thin. And then, you know, combine that with the babies that had sore hawks, it's genetically passed from her to them. It just, I'm gonna have to, I have to do it. I have to get rid of them, unfortunately. It's just nothing you can do. It's one of those things you have to deal with, but not all is lost. We do have some new rabbits here. Um, should get some pretty good production out of these guys. They did come from a pretty good stock. The guy I bought them from said he drove about three and a half hours and bought them from a woman that had been raising them for close to 30 years. And she got them directly from the university, Texas A&M University. And these are unrelated. So I'll be able to crossbreed them, sell a few, uh, make a little bit of feed money. Um, and then the rest can go in the freezer. Now what I did with these, uh, these uh, other rabbits, you know, especially that, that big blue doe, um, I did have to put her down, of course, uh, but I didn't, I mean, she's a three and a half year old rabbit or so, maybe four, I mean, she's older. I didn't want to eat her, she's gonna be tough, she's not gonna be any good. So uh, she's going to the dog, basically. So what I did was I just processed her like I normally would, saved uh, the liver and the heart, um, and then uh, cut her, you know, cut it up in, in pieces, and then froze it, and he gets one, like, he'll get a back leg one night. Just hand him the back leg straight out of the freezer, bone and all, and he does just fine with it. And uh, the next night he gets a section of back and then a front leg one night and, the, you know, all that stuff. So, I mean, that's basically how I did it. I thought about cooking it, shredding it, and taking it off the bone, but, you know, he, he's a dog. He can eat the bones. He'll be fine. And so far he hasn't had any issues with it. He's eating the bone. Takes him a little while because it's a big frozen hunk of meat. Uh, but once it gets starts to get thawed out boy, he makes quick work of that He just chomps down on that right through it like no no problem loves it So it's not going to waste <coughs> That's about it for this week's update um, Like I said tough decision, but it's something you got to do unfortunately So I'll keep you updated on how these guys go. It's gonna be a couple of months before I can breed them They're only like I said about three months old right now, so you know, we're looking at probably, this is August, uh, what is this today, the 12th? The 12th, so uh, we're looking at probably um, November-ish before they're ready to breed, maybe. Uh, we'll see, but hopefully, um, you know, the guy I bought them from says he breeds all summer long and uh, they do just fine, so we'll see. I don't know if I'll do that or not, but it's an option. I'll have it if I want to. So, thank you guys for watching, as always. God bless.